Painting has always helped me to feel more at peace when life presented challenges. I hope you'll enjoy this demonstration whether you're painting along or just watching out of boredom. I will show you how I created this blossom oil painting. I'm using the Strathmore 400 series oil painting paper, which I cut down to 5 by 7 inches, but you can use whatever canvas or panel you have. And I'm taping the edges down so that it stays put while I'm painting. The palette I'm going to be mixing my colors on is just a piece of glass from a cheap picture frame with a piece of toned paper attached to the back, and can't forget paper towels to wipe brushes on. For my brushes, I'm using angle brushes, filberts, and liners for details. The exact brands are listed in the description, but it really doesn't matter that much. You can use whatever you have. For my colors, I'm using titanium white, cadmium lemon, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, and ultramarine blue. For the medium, I'm using solvent-free gel from Gamblin, which I really love. It gives the paint an almost buttery consistency and it decreases the drying time, but you can use whatever medium you have available. If you have linseed oil, Galkid, or Liquin, you can mix it 50-50 with your solvent of choice. Uh, mediums aren't absolutely required for oil painting, but they make things so much more fun and really widen the possibilities of what you can do with the paint. I have this jar from groceries that I cleaned and now will be using it to hold my Gamzol, which is an odorless mineral spirit, also known as paint thinner. Since oil is not water soluble, this will allow me to rinse my brushes while I paint. And it can also be used to mix with different mediums like linseed oil. Using my filbert brush, I'm dipping it into the Gamzol and then mixing it with some of the burnt umber. This is what I'm using to tone my painting surface. You can see that it creates an almost watercolor-like consistency, which is the goal. I don't want to put too much pigment down so that it's not too dark, and also so it'll dry quickly. Feel free to use a bigger brush for this, it might actually be easier, but at the time I just went with that one. The goal is just to create a very thin wash of paint, and it doesn't have to be perfectly even on the surface. This is going to get covered up anyway, but what it allows me to do is to work with white paint right from the start, and I can use really light colors that will actually show up on the painting. If I was just using a blank white surface, those colors would not show up, so I can right away start by using a light color. I usually never work with blank white canvases, and you can even see that my palette is toned also. This allows me to achieve better values and get more accurate colors when I mix. This is just how I like to paint with oils, it's not the only way. There are so many different approaches you can take, and if you prefer blank white surfaces and white palette backgrounds, you're absolutely free to paint that way. This is just the method I'm using for this tutorial and for most of my art. I'm also not covering the entire surface, I left some of the edges blank. You can go ahead and cover the entire canvas if you want, but I wanted this to have a more painty, raw appearance with unfinished edges, so I left those blank. After I finished toning the surface, I let it settle and dry for about 15 to 20 minutes. I also cleaned off my brush and wiped that leftover burnt umber from my palette. Using a 2B graphite freshly sharpened pencil, I'm lightly drawing on some outlines for where the major shapes in the painting will go. I started with drawing a diagonal branch as I was seeing it in the reference. Then I moved on to the outlines of the blossom and the petals. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, you can always change things slightly when you paint. This is just a light foundation to start with. 
If you struggle with placing shapes into the right places, I suggest using a grid, which I'm going to link in the description. The link will also have the reference image if you want to use it for yourself, and some very simple instructions on how to use the grid in your painting. It's a free public post, even though it is on my Patreon. It's available to be viewed by anyone. You do not have to be a paying subscriber. I'm going to go ahead and let this drawing play out in real time. If you would like to skip to the part where we start painting, you can skip to the timestamp I have on the screen. Using the smaller filbert brush, I'm picking up some titanium white and adding very, very small amounts of ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit more blue if it's too brown, as well as a tiny amount of yellow. Then I add a tiny bit more blue. This creates a very light gray color with the most subtle, barely noticeable bluish green tint. I'm placing this color into the petals of the main foreground blossom, leaving the middle part mostly blank. You can think of this as just a starting base for me to later build on. You can see that I left some of the tips of the petals blank. Those are going to be the brightest highlight parts of the flower and I will be placing a much lighter color there. Then using the same brush with the color already on it, no need to wipe it off, I'm just picking up some more titanium white into a separate section. And this is to create some of the highlights on the blossoms, mostly on the tips of the petals with a few brush strokes going towards the center of the blossom. I'm trying to create an impression of the way I see light distributing on the flower in the reference. You can also see that highlight color showing up much better on the parts left unpainted, since it's not mixing with the gray color I placed down. And I'm just gently extending that color into the center where the petals meet. Continuing on adjusting the light on the blossom petals, gradually bringing in more and more of the lighter highlight color until it gets to a point where I'm happy with it. 
If you're following along, just know you don't have to replicate every single one of my brush strokes exactly the way I did it. I hope that this can be more of a little guide that you can use to give you an idea of one way to approach this painting. But know that what you create is still going to have your own unique touch. Even if 100 people paint this and follow this tutorial, those paintings are not going to be 100% identical to each other. They will still have that artist's brush strokes. Now I'm moving on to the second foreground blossom below and slightly behind the one I was just painting. I placed the much lighter color on the bottom most petals, but I'm going to mix a darker color for the rest of the flower. And you can see in the reference that this flower is just a little bit darker, especially the parts directly underneath the flower in the foreground. It's almost as if that flower is casting a very light shadow. At first I tried the very first color I mixed, which wasn't quite dark enough, so I brought in some more ultramarine blue and burnt umber to darken it just a little bit and create those soft shadows. Painting the shadow directly behind the bottom of the top flower sort of outlines it and makes those petals stand out more. I'm continuing to bring this darker shadow color into the rest of the petals using the reference as a guide and occasionally mixing the darker color with some of the lighter colors next to it since nothing in realism is ever just one solid flat color or value. There are varying degrees to every shadow and light and it's important to pay attention to those things because that will help create the illusion of something being real versus something like a cartoon. As you can see, I've switched to a bit of a lighter color again, still using the same brush for all of this, by the way. I am extending this lighter color into the shadows just a bit, making sure that my brush strokes with each petal head towards the center of the flower, since that's how the soft folds in the flower appear in nature. They're just all kind of stemming from the middle, and as the blossom grows, they just have very, very slight folds on the petals. You can see that I'm using the lighter color to highlight the edges of the petals as well. That's also something I was seeing in the reference, that light on the tips and sides of the petals. Once again, going for the ultramarine blue and burnt umber to darken the color again. I wanted to touch up the shadow directly behind the top flower and in general I'm just adding a bit more shadow onto the petals, just doing some touch-ups. I kind of go back and forth when I paint, I don't get everything 100% perfect right from the beginning. It's very much a gradual building process and my attention switches to different areas of the painting. Like right now I'm going back to touching up and intensifying some of the shadows on the top flower as well. Now I've switched to a liner brush and I'm going back into the highlight color which is very heavily titanium white as you can see and I'm just placing some thinner more precise brush strokes into those really light parts of the petals um, just to sort of distinguish the petals between each other. Some of them are kind of layered a little bit on top and so placing a bit of a highlight over a light shadow can create the illusion of a petal being on top of another one if that makes sense. It didn't make a massive difference but I'm painting intuitively and that's what I chose to do and as you can see I also went back to a slightly darker color again just doing some touch-ups on the shadows I placed down earlier. Now switching to my filbert again. I'm picking up some of the shadow color just touching up the petals but for the most part this filbert is for some of the background bouquet uh, also known as blurry flowers there's some blossoms back there that you can't really see in great detail and if you look at the reference um, you'll notice they're just in the background they're blurry and out of focus and so I'm just placing down some blobs basically uh, using a gray color where I see more darker shadows and then using more titanium white where I'm seeing a lighter color so it's a very blurry flower and I'm not 
painting it um, as crisp as I did the first one. You can see the edges are a lot fuzzier, they're softer, and so I'm just going to be placing down these uh, fuzzy <laughs> looking brush strokes into that area. I then cleaned off my brush in order to go back to the highlight colors, back into the titanium white, and just continue painting on some of the lighter colors I'm seeing there. You also don't have to replicate that area exactly as I'm doing it. Honestly, you could just put some paint blobs, you can make it way more impressionistic, and just create just put the colors there you don't even have to arrange them in the perfect shapes uh, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it i am personally was just trying to place down some messy looking <laughs> brush strokes sort of arranged in the shapes that i was seeing uh, not necessarily focusing on the details of those flowers obviously you can't even see them so i was just using my eyes as a guide and trying to paint what i saw um, but you don't have to go into full detail for every part of the painting you can make things look really smooth or you can make thicker more textured brush strokes it's entirely up to you the further away the background, the blurrier it is, and so at this point I'm not even arranging things in flower shapes, I'm just placing down a grey color back there because all I'm seeing in the reference is just blobs. And then you also have this purplish, bluish, greenish background, and so we're going to switch to that in a moment as well. This is the part that really starts to bring the painting a little more together once we start to fill in that background and just continue building details. I'm going back to ultramarine blue and burnt umber. with a bit of cadmium lemon and some more blue. Adjusting the amounts of each color gradually. And it ended up a little bit too dark, so I brought in some extra titanium white to lighten it. This is the start of the little background blossom further out of focus. There's also a little bud that hasn't bloomed yet, that one's a bit more in focus. And the color I'm using now is a bit too gray, but I will adjust that in a moment. I'm just filling in that area and creating an impression of the shape I'm seeing there. Using titanium white, just kind of combining it with some of the gray colors with a little bit of yellow and ultramarine blue, I'm starting to place down some of the pistols that you can see in the background from one of the blossoms that's sort of hidden, but those pistols are there, so I'm just placing down some gray tone in that area, um, roughly in that area, it's not perfect or 100% precise. And once I placed that color down, I cleaned off my brush and then went back into the highlight color, aka titanium white mostly, and I'm just putting in a little bit more detail into those shapes. Now everything will blend with the background and will be kind of adjusted. These are just sort of my base colors and so now I'm putting down a little bit more highlight into some of the background petals because they're once again even though you can't really see them you can still see the blurry uh, gradients from the highlight transitioning into a shadow. Now going with a liner brush, I'm picking up titanium white and back into some of the foreground flowers to touch up a little bit more of the detail. Since some of the first layer I painted already kind of absorbed into my surface, now going back to it, uh, the paint isn't lifting as much as when you paint a fresh layer, so I can get a little bit more paint piled on top of there 
and it shows up a bit more more intensely you can also leave that layer to dry and then come back to it another day your palette might also be dry so you have to scrape it off the glass scraper to start up your colors again but you don't have to do this all in one sitting unless you are specifically blending a layer um, with multiple colors otherwise if the paints dry it's not gonna blend so now I'm taking ultramarine blue bring it into the titanium white with a little bit of cadmium lemon to create this obviously more green color also adding a little bit of solvent free gel to that and I'm just making the colors I placed down in that petal a little bit greener um, it's not quite showing up as I was seeing it in person on camera and I will adjust it further but I'm also bringing that green into some shadows in the background petals as well if you zoom really closely into the reference which you can do uh, by going to the link I mentioned earlier to download the reference image if you zoom really closely onto it you will see that there's a lot of different tones like down to the pixel there's greens there's purples there's a little bit of a warm tone so Although I placed mostly grays in the beginning, now is the time where I tone them a little towards whatever colors I'm seeing when looking really, really closely. And so at that point, I was seeing some greens. mixing cadmium lemon with ultramarine blue a little bit heavier on the ultramarine blue and it's right next to my titanium white I'm adding that into it too to create an almost turquoise like color just to place around some of those pistols in the background since they blend with the blues and greens in the background I just wanted to start or at least get that started that green sort of halo around it and I'm also outlining that little background bud that hasn't blossomed yet I'm also adding some more titanium white it's kind of like a gray color mixed with some of the bluish greens I mixed into it you can barely tell but it's not just pure titanium white there is a little bit of those other colors in there as well and I'm filling in that little uh, outline or shape I made for the little budding blossom now picking up some cadmium red light along with those light colors I already had on my brush you can see in the reference that there's some warm tones in there it's not only just greens or white there is a little bit of a pink peachy kind of tone there after wiping my brush, I picked up some burnt umber and started a new section on my palette. Then I added some cadmium red light and cadmium lemon. And a little bit of titanium white. Some more cadmium lemon and some more burnt umber. This is for the stem that the little budding blossom is on. And since there's light paint underneath, it blends with it ever so slightly, but that's okay. Then going back into the burnt umber to darken it slightly, you can see at the very base of where the little bud is there, you can see a slightly darker blur, and so that's what I was painting. Then going with some more titanium white and cadmium lemon, I'm painting a little bit of the shadows around it. Then going back to some of the darker grays to paint a few of the lighter shadows towards the top. Then I added a little bit more cadmium lemon to that color and just touched up some of that stem, tried to make it a little bit blurry and just add some more of the yellowish brownish tone to that area which had been so cool toned and gray. I switched back to a liner brush and I'm just going back to some of the lighter highlight colors I created mostly like a very light gray and I'm once again touching up the petals 
on some of the blossoms I first painted and this is just how I paint a lot of times I'll see a correction that needs to be made later on into the painting where I didn't see it in the beginning for me it's always been a very gradual building process and my starting colors my starting layers are always just sort of like a foundation that I build upon I never try to make everything perfect from the beginning so now going into some of the peachy tones, I'm actually bringing them into the petals as well because I was seeing that in the reference, they weren't just like pure white petals. Uh, the way I edited the colors sort of gave off a little bit of warmth in some of those highlight areas. And so I'm taking that peachy color I created, which was mostly titanium white with a bit of cadmium red light, and I'm placing it into some of the petals. It's kind of hard to tell on camera unfortunately. After cleaning off my brush, I went into some of the yellowish browns and brought in some more burnt umber and cadmium red light into that color. This color is for the centers of the blossoms, the parts that I left blank. You can see I'm now mixing a little bit of the lighter color and just blending that around the edges of the dark circles I placed down. Adding a little bit more titanium white. And just trying to soften that dark harsh shape. Bringing in a little bit more cadmium lemon into the more yellowish brown with some titanium white, just continuing to soften that darker color and sort of blend it a little bit more with the grays and the petals. And you can see in the reference it's not quite that dark. So now I'm bringing in some alizarin crimson towards that darker brown color with a little bit of solvent free gel and some of the lighter grays and you can see that the blurry flowers their centers appear a little bit more red now this is not what the reference looked like in real life um, I actually edited the image to have more blues and like a bit of a turquoise uh, bluish green color and for the pistols and the in the blossoms to be like reddish orange whereas in real life they were yellow Yellow. And since some of the colors back there in the top left corner were looking a little bit more green, I didn't put the bright pinkish red everywhere. And then I'm just touching up some of the shadows and the flowers. Now I'm switching to a dry brush, one of my filberts. The bristles have to be very soft for this and I'm just tapping it on some of the areas to soften up some of the harsher looking brush strokes, make it look a little bit more blurry, just blend things together a little bit more. And then bringing it into the titanium white to paint a little bit more of the light areas and some parts of the petals. Then switching back to a clean liner brush, I'm going into the greens I created and adding some ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of cadmium lemon, and some cadmium red light. And as you can see, it makes this brownish color. So first I'm just touching up a little section in between the petals. There's a bit of a shadow that I wanted to paint. And after that, I'm going to be surrounding some of the area around the flowers. So I brought in some more ultramarine blue into that. That small little section, I was seeing a bit more brown right underneath some of the, or behind the petals as it transitioned into the background, but it's obviously more of a greenish bluish color. So I'm taking some ultramarine blue and starting up a brand new section on my palette, whole new color. 
Now we're starting into the background colors. So ultramarine blue for the majority, then I added some cadmium lemon. And I just kept adding a little bit more yellow, a little bit of titanium white to lighten it, and just kept adding a tiny bit more yellow until it was closer to the color I was seeing in the background. If you have phthalo green in your arsenal, I recommend using that, or phthalo blue mixed with a little bit of yellow. That's actually going to have the pigments much closer to the background color, but I'm just using a palette that I believe more people are likely to have, so we're just going to work with that. However, if you have any phthalo uh, green or blue, feel free to use that instead. And so I'm just surrounding or painting around some of the shapes I placed down. I actually have more control with a liner brush with a thinner bristle that I'm working with. And you'll see why I like to paint blurry backgrounds with a thinner brush or a liner brush it actually gives me more control and I'm a lot better at making blurry effects exactly the way I want it and you might think it's crazy a lot, a lot of people comment on my larger paintings where I'm creating water and it's these huge canvases and people are asking why on earth are you using such small brushes but <laughs> It works. I like to do it. So I started off a darker color with some ultramarine blue, a little bit of cadmium lemon in there as well for some of the background above the flower. There's varying different colors. Some of them are a bit darker, some of them a little bit greener. So for now, I'm just kind of surrounding a few shapes I placed down. Once again, adding a bit of cadmium lemon and ultramarine blue to darken the color slightly. As you can see, the color in that section of the reference is darker than the other parts I was just painting. And so I just put a little bit of background into three separate sections of the painting and I will connect everything. This is just me switching my attention around. Right around now is when I start blending and creating a bit of a blur with some of that blossom that's back there in the background, the blurry one, and I'm gently blending that blossom with the background in like a circular motion to blend the two colors together. And as you can see, it creates a blurry, fuzzy looking effect. Sometimes you might have to wipe your brush if there's too much dark or light color or go back over a certain area to create a better blend. Some areas of the blur in the background have a larger area of one color, not as many gradients or a much larger gradient transitioning versus like a small detailed one. So I'm going to speed some of those parts up so that this doesn't drag on too long. And I'm continuing to blend the background color with some of the blurry blossom. Using that same liner brush and bringing it into some of the browns, the warmer browns I created, then picking up some of a green color I created, and I'm just trying to warm up some of that area and also bring the values down a little bit. And there's also just more yellowish browns in that fade, that transition from the blossom to the background. Uh, that blur that's created, I was seeing a lot of warm tones. and. There's also some stems and pistols sort of poking out behind there, but it's all very blurry and just, I'm just kind of suggesting those details, not really trying to make actual <laughs> details. Also to darken that whole area a little bit because that background blurry blossom just looks like one big blob. It's kind of flat looking. There's not a whole lot of shape. And so I'm trying to darken things a little bit. Sometimes I'll even bring some of the background color in and to reshape things and create the illusion of blurry petals. And basically just kind of going back and forth, uh, looking at the reference and at my painting, comparing and seeing what I can do better, what I can improve. 
I switch to a different liner brush and I'm going into some of those warm browns I mixed and bringing them into a few areas in that blurry blossom back there to once again bring down the value and also to create some more of those warm tones because as I mentioned earlier my base was very gray um, and there was way more warm tones I was seeing a little bit more greens as well and so zooming into that reference you can really get a close look on all the colors you might need which you might not see from far away and I think using a computer is really beneficial when it comes to observing references Now I'm also adding those cooler browns into the transition of the blurry blossom and the background. I would also periodically wipe my brush if there was too much paint on it just to create a drier bristle which helped blend better. After cleaning off my brush, I picked up some ultramarine blue and added some cadmium lemon. I actually was not happy with this color I made. I have a use for it way later on, but then I cleaned my brush off again <laughs> and decided to start over with a new color. I used ultramarine blue and a little bit less cadmium lemon and some titanium white this time. And this is just to continue the background for some of the lighter parts of the blur. These are blossoms that are way further away. You can't even see suggested detail. It's just a flat out blur, a gradient. And so this lighter color is for that purpose. I also created a slightly bluer version of that color by using less cadmium lemon. And I'm continuing to paint around the foreground and also connect these blossoms, these flowers, with the background and transition it properly so that it looks good to me, it doesn't look plastered on. And so using these longer brush strokes to sort of blend the background with these stems and pistils that are blurry and are sort of poking through back there. It doesn't have to be perfect and as you can see mine look quite larger than what's in the reference but that's just kind of how I wanted to paint it. And I'm continuing to do the same thing I was in the other parts when I was blending the background to the flowers, uh, just using some circular motions or in the case of like stems, uh, more vertical brush strokes but still mostly going in circular motions to create that blurry effect and blend the lighter color with the darker color. I'm now switching to a clean filbert brush for some of the bulkier areas. The liner brush was important for getting some of those delicate blends around the shapes of the flowers, but now for larger areas I'm mixing ultramarine blue with titanium white and a little bit of cadmium lemon so that it's not too blue. Little extra blue. And I'm just painting that blue blob <laughs> above the flowers. And I can still create blends, but because I'm not painting delicate shapes and trying to get in between certain details, I'm just using a filbert. It's going to work much faster for creating those larger areas back there. So now I'm making a darker color. Once again, same as before, just ultramarine blue with some uh, cadmium lemon, a little bit of titanium white, and I'm continuing to fill in the areas of the background that are darker.
If I needed to darken one of these background cooler tones, I would just go heavier on the ultramarine blue and use less of the lighter greens I mixed or less titanium white. And in order to get it to not be too blue, I would add just a little bit cadmium lemon. I'm also leaving the stem portion at the bottom of the painting blank for now, but I will paint that with the brown tones. You can see that I'm still using mostly circular motions to blend. I'm just getting a lot more coverage versus using a small liner brush. Now using significantly more ultramarine blue with some cadmium lemon to paint the darkest parts of that side along the right there. I'm going over every section of the underpainting wherever you see that faint layer of burnt umber I am covering it up but as I mentioned in the beginning I'm leaving the edges blank I wanted to have that raw sort of unfinished look on the sides there so I am going over some of the areas where it's just blank white background underneath just to have it look as if it's only painted on white background but I still try to cover the majority of the underpainting Then I cleaned off my brush to get all of that darker pigment off of it and I'm taking some titanium white and ultramarine blue. I just brought it into the bluish greens I already had, a little bit more titanium white and I'm painting the very blurry background blossoms further out in the distance. The, the further the blurrier, they're just like a blob back there and so I'm placing down the light color first in that empty space I left then I added a little bit of cadmium lemon to it and brought in some more ultramarine blue to darken it to create a transition from the lightest to the darkest color I didn't want to just blend that light color with the blues it wouldn't quite be right you can see there's a little bit of a greenish halo around some of the uh, very blurry blossoms back there As I was blending, I periodically wiped my brush on a paper towel to dry it up a bit because the more the paint, the less smooth that blend was. Okay. 
Now I'm picking up some ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson into a completely separate section of the palette, bringing in some of the lighter blue. And I'm starting the purples in the painting. When I zoomed into that really blurry background, lighter blossom part I was just painting, I was able to see some purples in those gradients as well. And so now I'm just placing that where I'm seeing it in the reference. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm doing my best to create a seamless gradient. And now I'm also bringing the purples into that transition because as, as you can see in the reference from the very right, it's a little bit bluish green, then it becomes a bit more purple. And then towards the upper left corner, it's more of a peachy tone with a bright white background. So I started incorporating some of that purple tone into the bluish sections while continuing to work on those fades, the gradients. And again, the more paint there is on your brush, the harder it's going to be to get a really smooth blend. Uh, they're going to be a bit more strokey and painty, and that's totally okay if that's what you want. For, for what I was doing in this painting, I wanted it to look uh, very smooth, and so I periodically kept drying my brush on a paper towel. And right around now, I am going to speed this up twice uh, because it's kind of redundant and this tutorial is already almost an hour long and it's only going to get longer from here on. So I hope you guys don't mind. I'm trying to make this as detailed as I possibly can without being too redundant. Uh, but I think you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going in with the same colors I already had, a little bit more of the blue now. Uh, in some of those areas around the blossoms. I'm now covering the other sections of the blank parts I have with the underpainting peeking through. I just brought in a little bit more cadmium lemon for the greener parts around that bottom blossom and focus. And then we're gonna switch over into more of a purple tone to create that purple transition on the left. Now I'm bringing in more ultramarine blue with some alizarin crimson to create more of a purple tone. And I'm starting that purple as it transitions from the blues or the greenish blues to be more precise. It does look a little bit different on my painting than it does on the digital reference you see on screen. So just keep in mind that it looked a bit different in person, just the way the cameras pick things up compared to what you're seeing on that reference. Uh, it does look a little bit closer in person, but it's still fine the way it is. Personally, it doesn't have to match exactly. I like to look at the reference as more of a guide rather than something you have to replicate just the way it is. So I brought in more uh, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue with some titanium white now to make it a little bit lighter. It was too light, so I did the same thing. Added some more alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue to get the value down so I get a darker purple tone. And I'm starting that section there, the darker purple you see in the reference. Darkening it just a little bit more with more ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And I'm continuing those more circular type motions with the brush strokes and still avoiding the branch. Uh, that I left blank at the bottom there. I'm also leaving it blank here in the middle uh, because I'll, I'll get to that later. Right now I just want to focus on these background tones. And I'm darkening it again with just a bit more ultramarine blue, a little bit more alizarin crimson. And you can see by zooming in really close into that darker purple blob back there, it, there is a bit of a bluer tone in the darker section. Going back to the ultramarine blue into a, a slightly different area of the palette. It's right next to all those colors, but I'm mixing that with some of the greenish blues and just continuing some of that area there. There's a lighter 
purple grayish bluish blossom blur back there that I'm gonna leave blank for now but it will be something I fill in later just if you see me painting around that section that's what that is now using significantly more alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue once again a little bit more titanium white continuing on with the purple section and once again the lighter colors I'm gonna leave blank for now Now adding a little bit of titanium white into that purple color I already had on my palette and I'm now filling in some of that blank blurry section. The blur if you zoomed in on it is a little bit more blue uh, than the rest of the purples in the background so that's something you want to also pay attention to when painting gradients and bokeh of any kind. Really zoom in on those gradients because it's going to be much easier to see colors uh, that you need to use. Picking up a little bit more of that lighter color there to brighten up this area since my original color that I placed down was a little bit too dark. filling in that section that I left blank this little blurry petal or flower it's kind of hard to tell honestly it's just a blur it's a little bit tricky because it's at an interesting point where it transitions from purple to green so that blur also is in the middle of it and so although I started painting some of the lighter section as purple I'm now bringing in some more greens around it or at least bluish greens with the cat with the ultramarine blue and cadmium lemon brought in some titanium white into that and so I'm just filling in that black blank space but trying to also make sure that I get that transition right so now half of that little blurry round shape is purple and the other half is like a lighter greenish blue hopefully that makes sense but I'm gonna be reworking this a little bit it just takes some time to get the value right get the colors right so don't expect your result to be perfect right from the beginning Sometimes it just takes a little bit of trial and error to get things right, and they don't have to be perfect. I'm bringing those bluish greens into the area next to the foreground flowers, and also into some of the other blurry, lighter parts. lighter bokeh blurs are a little bit more purple here to the very left so I used less bluish green in those areas and I'm continuously going back to areas I've already painted just touching them up changing them slightly until things look right to me And then towards the bottom left corner, I'm going to bring in significantly more titanium white into that color. picked up a liner brush and brought it into some of my darkest bluish greens 
to paint some of this very dark shadow blur I was seeing towards the bottom in between some of the lighter blurs. Hopefully that makes sense and I'm just gently blending that with those other colors. Then I switched back to my Filbert brush, which still had some the same colors I was using before I put it down, and just continuing to fill in a blank spot of a lighter bouquet blur. I brought in a little bit of cadmium lemon to that, some more titanium white, just to make things a little bit greener, and just blending it with the surrounding colors. bit more cadmium lemon into those lighter blues just to work on that transition at the bottom I was seeing it as being a lighter green in the reference and again my painting doesn't match perfectly and that's okay if yours doesn't either After cleaning off my brush to get all the light pigment off, I picked up some burnt umber and brought it into the ultramarine blue and cadmium lemon mixture I made earlier and didn't like, and I added some alizarin crimson as well. This color, along with a little bit of titanium white mixed into it, is for the branch part, and I just added a tiny bit of cadmium red light, and so I started on the branch at the bottom. However, I'm going to leave that section as is for now, and I moved on to the middle section of the branch, which is a little bit blurrier. So I picked up some solvent-free gel, and then a tiny bit of titanium white, and just continued on with painting that little branch section. And again, it doesn't align perfectly the same way that you see it in the reference, uh, but that's not my goal here just trying to make it look like a branch and not exactly like it does in the photo. I'm also extending this color slightly under that petal back there because the shadows in the middle, um, it was blurry, but I could see there was a little bit more brown in that section and it could possibly be another branch directly behind that area. It's just blurry and hard to tell. Um, and then I brought in a little bit more of the lighter blue colors just to fill in some of the areas around it. I also went into some of the bluer gray that I used on the petals previously and I'm touching up the petals on that blossom back there. And I'm trying to make this a little bit darker just to bring the value down a little bit because as you can see in the reference, there is some light peeking through in between these background blossoms and if they're not quite dark enough, it's not going to look right. So I'm just bringing the value down a little bit and just creating a blend around those petals and that little space in between the branch and the other flowers. Going for the darker greenish blues for that little space that's blank with the underpainting peeking through. I brought in a little bit of cadmium lemon to that color as well to make it a bit greener. 
Zooming in on the reference, you can see a little bit of green tones in there. I wiped my brush off and then went for some of the gray tones to create a softer blend with that blossom. Then going for some of the earthier yellow tones combined with a little bit of the bluish grays, I'm placing that color into a space where I was seeing a bit of a warm gradient, possibly with some blurry, shadowy blossoms back there. Again, it's you can't really see. I'm just guessing. Going for the bluish green tones, I started off with a lighter color and then went into a bit of a darker bluish green, but I'm painting a little bit of light that's reflecting off the side of the branch there. Um, it's just kind of like a transitional green color I was seeing in that blur of the branch and also correcting this wonky little shape that was sticking out there from the petal, just painting directly over it and then blending those browns with the bluish greens I was placing down. After wiping off my brush, I went into the darkest bluish greens and into the dark browns. I actually added more burnt umber and ultramarine blue to make it even darker, and I'm painting the shadows on the bottom part of the branch there on each side of the branch. Zooming into the reference, you can see the middle has more of like a reddish brownish kind of glow, and then the sides are darker. I also placed that color into the innermost space there between the two petals. The blossom in the reference is positioned a little bit differently where those brown shadows are actually directly behind the flower. In my case, mine was painted a little bit more to the left, which is fine. That's just how I did it. <laughs> so I just left that part alone. And you can see there's a bit of a leaf sort of sticking out of the branch, some kind of green shape there. I actually completely omitted that from the painting. I decided not to paint it, just left it out, didn't feel like it was necessary. But if you want to paint that, go ahead. Picking up some of those reds I mixed into that warm highlight, the light that's reflecting off the branch, and it's the same color that I used for the centers of the flowers. Oftentimes there are multiple purposes for color you mix. I'm also bringing in some of those darker browns back into the middle section of the branch, blending it a little bit into that gradient that I painted earlier, that space between the flowers and the branch where you can see some background peeking through, and also bringing those browns behind the flower. And in the reference, the branch sort of disappears, so I'm painting it a little bit differently here. I cleaned off my filbert, made sure all the pigment was out of the brush, and picked up some cadmium red light and titanium white, a little bit more cadmium red light, and I'm continuing the background. I added just a little bit of cadmium lemon and some more cadmium red light just to make it slightly darker and an extra titanium white to make it more opaque. And I'm continuing the background. I'm now painting on that warm transition, that peachy color that I'm seeing in some of the fuzzy blurry areas that the purple transitions to. You can see that I ran out of this color rather quickly, so I did have to remix it. And at the moment, I'm not blending it with the purples just yet. I'm just placing it in the areas I see it, and then I will blend it once I get it in all those places. I'm now extending this color into some of the bluer grays on my palette and incorporating that into the peachy tones on the right in the middle. And I'm starting that transition there, the blend between the blue tones and the peachy color. I'm 
picking up a separate clean filbert brush with some titanium white and a, just a tiny bit of that peachy color you can barely tell and I'm painting some of that light in the background it's very blurry but it's sort of peeking through between the petals and the blossoms I brought in a little bit more titanium white if it was a little bit too dark. This part can be a little bit tricky because the value of the blurs in the background is actually quite close to the values in the flowers back there, so it's Kind of important to make sure you're getting those values right otherwise it's just going to look like one big blob back there but it's okay if you don't get it right right from the beginning and i didn't get it perfect so it's fine you can always correct it later in the painting right now i'm just placing down some of that light paints just to create that light back there In this section, the contrast between the values of that background light and the blurry blossom flowers is definitely easier to see and it's important that the light is lighter than the flowers in order for it to look like it's actually peeking through behind them. Gently blending that titanium white with the peachy tones along with some of the grays I placed down for the blurriest furthest away flowers in the top left corner and I'm trying to remove that harshness between the peachy color and the titanium white I'm painting down. The bristles of your brush have to be soft in order to get these gentle soft blends and nice fades and gradients and if you find that your bristles are soft and you're still getting some harsher brush strokes you might have too much paint on your brush so just be sure to wipe it on a paper towel periodically as you blend because you're going to be picking up more paint. I'm continuing to blend that light around the dark stem and the little flower that's more gray. We will add a few more darker values here just to make these flowers stand out more against the background colors. And now I'm blending that lighter background color, some of the peachy tones with the grays, with the darker purple. And you'll see me periodically uh, wipe my brush off camera, off screen, and then come back. And this is in order to get smoother brush strokes, as I mentioned earlier. The more you blend, the more paint you're going to pick up because it's already on the canvas. And then you're going to get harsher lines, which I wanted very smooth bokeh blurs and gradients here. So I opted for a drier brush. I also dipped back into some of that lightest color of the background light. And I'm just touching up some of the areas around these petals and the space in between them just to make it a little bit brighter and then also blending that stem back there to create a bit of a blur since it was so harsh against the background and I kind of improvised that since it didn't really look that way in the reference and so I just decided to put a little bit of the gray tones, the lighter gray tones over it to make it softer. Going back over some areas to smooth them out some more and continuing to work on that transition from the purples into the peachy tones, trying to get a better blend. Thank you. 
I also brought in some of the grays from the petal shadows and this is like a transitional color since I don't want the blend to only be from peachy to purple. If you notice in the reference some of the gray tones from flowers in the background that you can't really see, it all just kind of fuses together there. I'm going back to some of the gray tones I mixed for the flower shadows as well as some of the lighter greenish blues as well. And this is to touch up some of the shadows in these blurry blossoms in the top left. You can't really see the details, but I could see that the color I had down there wasn't quite dark enough in contrast with the background. And I'm also bringing these grays and greenish blues into a few of the shadows in the blurry flowers slightly closer to the foreground as well. Adding just a little bit more shadow here helps to distinguish these flowers from the background. Then I went back again to titanium white to create brighter light back there since some of the blending I did kind of darkened it slightly. And so I just kind of go back and forth between some of the shadow colors and then light again. The purple in this section was still looking a little bit too harsh to me, so I brought in some of the gray tones to add a transitional color, and I also decided to switch to a liner brush. If I find that I'm struggling to get a really smooth blend in a small area with a larger brush like a Filbert, I just switch over to a smaller brush, and then I can make those really small circular motions to get a nice, easy, smooth blend. You can see what a huge difference that made for that section. It no longer looks so harsh. Then I went back to titanium white with my liner brush, and now I'm just touching up some more of that light in between the two flowers. As I mentioned earlier, this section between these two flowers is where there's the most contrast between the background and the shadows of the petals as far as that light section goes. And so just trying to brighten up these areas where there's more light back there to continue creating uh, distinction between the blossoms and the background. Then back to some of the shadows, I'm in the greenish blues. Zooming into this section of the reference, you can see there's a little bit of a green halo around some sort of blurry branch looking shape. It's hard to tell, but I'm just placing down a little bit more of a, a green tone there to paint what I was seeing basically. <laughs> I'm not necessarily trying to make it perfectly accurate, just kind of creating an impression of what I was seeing, basically. 
going into a greener tone, I'm bringing this color into some of the blurry background flowers that I've mostly painted gray. I was seeing a few very subtle faint greens in those areas and I'm just trying to add some variety into those shadows since shadows are never really just one solid color when it comes to painting things that are realistic. I'm bringing that lighter color into the side on the left here as well. I was seeing a shadow that I kind of omitted or didn't notice perhaps when I was blending those background colors earlier, so I decided to add that. Using a clean dry brush, I'm just blending out some of the outer edges of the flower bud. It looked a little bit too harsh the way I painted it and in the reference it was a bit softer. I'm also blending out some of the petals and the flower behind it. I cleaned off that liner brush and then brought it into some titanium white again and I'm just going to be adding a few more highlights, just touching up these foreground blossoms. So we're now going back full circle <laughs> to the very thing we started with. So at this point, some of the oils in the paint has sort of disappeared into the painting surface, which was a canvas paper. Um, if you are working with a panel or canvas that's been gessoed, this might also happen. But I found that paper is definitely quicker to absorb oils in the paint. And so working a la prima is actually kind of nice because when you layer on top, the paint doesn't, although it's wet paint, it doesn't lift up as easily as it would on, like if you were to paint on plexiglass or something like that, or even a panel. So now that I'm going back to it, uh, some of the oils have sort of seeped into the paper and I'm able to layer on a little bit more white paint and just touch up some edges to make it look nicer, a little bit more realistic, a little more detailed. I went into a lighter bluish green to blend out the edges of the flower petals and you can see super closely on the reference there's a very small almost glow or halo around the petals that appears kind of turquoise. I did the same thing for the little flower bud, except this one has a bit of a greener halo around it or the way the out of focus sort of fuses with the background. And so I used a little bit more yellow. And I did the same for the little pistil stems in the back sort of peeking through behind the flower. You can see in the reference how much blues and greens are there. I didn't go quite as intense as what was in the reference. I also didn't have the bright palette that is necessary. So again, if you have phthalo blue or phthalo green, uh, mixing that with either blue or yellow is going to give you some very beautiful vivid tones, especially if you add titanium white to it. That would be ideal for painting these sort of soft halos and very bright saturated colors around them. Um, but I'm just trying to use a palette that I think more people have accessible. So simple colors, not quite as vivid as those pigments. I'm blending a little bit of greens into this small space between some of the flower shapes and the background, as well as adding a bit more shadow to this blurry flower that I'm painting that's off to the right. I felt it wasn't quite dark enough, so I adjusted the values a little bit. You can see I'm adding just a small tint of brown into those greens. 
just trying to make these shadows a little bit darker so that it looks like it's actually behind the flowers, out of the light, and also just to bring it to an earthier tone since it was a little bit too gray. And so these are now the final touch-ups of the painting. I did the bulk of most of the work, most of the detailing. I'm just adding some subtle changes to make things better. Adding shadows to the petals also helps create the illusion of there being petals with the different light falling on certain areas of the flower. And towards the bottom petals, I was also seeing some purples. So I brought in some of the purples I mixed for the background into the petals. Not even wiping my brush, I'm just going straight into the little flower bud, just adding some shadows. I went into the browns to touch up and blend some of that area as well. Then I cleaned off my liner brush completely because it's time to mix a brand new color. I'm picking up some cadmium red light, bringing it next to the browns with some cadmium lemon, some titanium white, a little more cadmium red light, a little bit of the darker browns I mixed, just a tiny, tiny little bit. And this is for some of the pistols in the blossoms. By the way, you're more than welcome to skip this part if you're nervous about messing up your details on your flower. You can go ahead and wait for your flowers to dry uh, and come back to it later. That way you can just go ahead and wipe it right off if you don't like what you've done. So if you want to do that, you feel free to skip this part and then just continue touching up the background after I'm done with this part. I just went ahead and painted this on. It might be a little bit challenging because there is some white paint there and some of the reds might blend with with it just a little bit. Um, I was impatient. <laughs> I just went ahead and just decided to go for these details, but feel free to come back when the painting is dried. That way, if you mess up, you can just wipe it right off with some solvent on your brush or even a paper towel and it won't ruin all your hard work. I just looked up the official flower anatomy terms for these blossoms and the little spots sticking out of the flower are called the anther and the stems they are attached to is called the filament. I've just been calling them pistols this whole time. I probably should have looked this up before recording an hour and a half worth of voiceover, but I'm just gonna roll with it. <laughs> I'm a painter and not a biologist, so apologies on that part. Um, anyway, while painting these, I'm sort of improvising. I'm paying attention to which direction the flowers are facing in the reference, and that is the direction most of the filaments will be sticking out towards. And I'm just starting by painting the dots, and I'll paint the little stems later. A little rogue dot that I wasn't happy with it felt out of place so I just painted right over it with the colors and the shadows of the petals you can see it blended out just a, a little bit but it's not a huge deal just balanced it out with some more titanium white and now for the filaments or the stem to the red dots I'm just combining some titanium white and reds, browns, a little bit of the earthy yellows into this sort of grayish beige color and I'm just painting very faint subtle lines kind of going towards the center of the flower where they all connect and kind of sprout from going into a little bit of a darker color, the darker browns the stems slash filaments are actually quite light and to show them sort of sprouting from the center point I used extra titanium white to paint a few tiny brush strokes that they actually show up there since the color I was using the, the beige brown would not have. Now it's time to do the same thing for the other flower. I 
also decided to spontaneously blend out that center point just to soften it up a little bit. It seemed too harsh, so I used a dry liner brush for that. Some of the outer anthers towards the outside, most parts of this little sprout of anthers <laughs> wasn't quite as bright and vivid red, so I just used a little bit more brown or green in those sections. Now I'm going for the very dark color I mixed for the branches and combining it with some of the earthy greenish yellows and some cadmium red in there as well and I'm just painting on some of the outer shadows of these little anthers. There's, if you zoom in super closely onto the reference you can see they're not just one flat color, there's a little bit of a shadow on the sides. So I'm just improvising that, not trying to get it to look 100% accurate or perfect, just trying to add a little bit more dimension to these little details. Then going back to the cadmium red light, cadmium lemon, and some titanium white into that color as well. A little bit more cadmium lemon, a little more titanium white, and I'm just trying to create this reddish peachy color to paint some of the highlights on those little anthers. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's obviously like in between the shadow parts, just trying to create the illusion of there being more dimension in those small little details. Then to a darker reddish brown again to touch up some more shadow details. And now bringing those reds into the gray colors, some of the browns, the titanium white, just to create another warm brownish color. I'm back to painting the stems. Could have done that, of course, immediately after I painted the stems on the other flower, but I'm pretty spontaneous when I paint. I have an urge to make one part of the painting and I'll just switch despite working on something else at that time. It's just sort of how I paint. I don't like forcing myself to be confined to one area of the painting when I notice something else that I want to fix. And so when I paint, I'm kind of all over the place. Touching up some of the stems I painted first, just going over them, darkening a few areas, or placing down a stem slash filament where there isn't one or it's too light. And now using those warm, light beige reddish browns to paint some of those details on the background flowers, which you can't see that well in the reference. So this is another thing I'm just sort of improvising and I'm making these very, very faint uh, impressions of uh, anthers and filaments in the flower. I'm trying to blend them with the paint that's already down in the petals. Uh, so I brought in a little bit of titanium white there with a the filbert just to blend it out since that line looked a little bit too harsh. And so here they don't have to be super crisp or detailed like in the foreground. They can just be a little blurry, a little messier. It doesn't really matter because you can't see them anyway. <laughs> If you made it this far into the video, especially if you didn't skip, let me know in the comments by writing painting party 
in the comments and this will let me know that you're awesome and amazing thank you so much for watching this far into this really lengthy tutorial and by commenting you also let the youtube algorithm know that this video is worth sharing because it notices that engagement all that activity under a video so if you want to help me out a little that would be great if not it's cool <laughs> but right now i'm bringing some more of those warm tones back into some of the blurrier flowers in the background there you can see in the reference there's quite a few spots back there that could have some more red in my painting at least a little bit of a soft peachy color anyway um, just some blurry flower centers and anthers and filaments just all kind of back there they're all blurred so I'm just painting some blobs down no real details but I am trying to place those colors in the places where I'm seeing it or at least roughly around the same areas where I'm seeing them in the reference Now I'm going for a filbert brush again and I'm just going to be extending a little section of the background up top which could use a little bit of extending it just looks weird like it cuts in and dips there so I just wanted to blend it out a little bit more using some of the purples and I'm just blending that into some of the peachier section of the background. And at this point, it's pretty much all background touch-ups. So I went into some of the greenish browns and I'm blending some more of that area, darkening it a little bit, extending it downwards a little bit, just trying to get this rough looking border to seem a little more even. Although this is what I was going for, it doesn't have to be perfect, but there were some parts of it that were kind of throwing me off. Uh, the way the edges were angled or the way it cut off. So I'm just extending things a little bit uh, onto the edges and blending certain parts of the bouquet in the background. Using a clean filbert brush, I went back to some titanium white to make some very minor touch-ups and adjustments on the background light. Just kind of blend it very softly, it's barely noticeable. To me it was noticeable in person. I felt like adding a little bit extra light, brightening certain things up a little bit, um, but you can call a painting finish whenever you want. It's entirely up to you. This is just me uh, having a hard time deciding when to finally call it done because I feel like I could do a little better on blending a few things. I brought a little bit of titanium white back into that blurry flower just to add some blurry highlights, I guess. Uh, just work on some of the light on this flower. Then going back to some of the background and just blending these gradients together, trying to get things to be smoother. And now going into some of the blue sections. And all the same colors, I'm not really mixing anything new. I've already had these colors laid out on my palette. So I either add to them or combine them together with other colors on my palette. I hardly ever paint with colors straight out of the tube. I think I did that with titanium white today and that was about it really. Um, and even then it was still mixed with other colors. And so now going into the lighter blues just to work on those little bokeh blurs, those background flowers that you can't see, trying to make things look fuzzy, blurry. 
but this is how I do it. It takes forever. <laughs> and then going back to this little bottom blurry flower just to touch it up a little bit. Um, wasn't quite happy with it, went into the darker greens and just touched up some of the area around it. Just kind of going over and building on top of work I've already done as far as that blending goes. Now I'm cleaning off my slightly larger filbert and I'm also going to have to dry it very well. Uh, this is for the final final touch-ups. I'm just going to be patting down certain areas, just softening a few spots that I feel like look a little bit harsh or I feel like could use a little extra blending and this is just the final touch-ups and I'm periodically drying my brush as I do this so that I don't pick up too much paint and then create harsh brush strokes that I'm not really looking to create. These are just the final touch-ups. I'm nearing that point where I decide, all right, I'm gonna let go now. <laughs> Again, it's entirely up to you how far you want to push a painting, um, how far you want the details to go. Sometimes I walk away from paintings and then come back to them. I don't always finish my work in one sitting. In fact, I almost never do. Most of my art is done in layers, so I would let this dry and then come back another day to detail it further. But because this is a tutorial catered more towards beginners, I feel like layering might be a little intimidating from the beginning, even though it's not hard at all. <laughs> but for a beginner, it could be intimidating. Um, so finishing everything in one go, I prefer to do that for beginner tutorials. Um, but just know, <laughs> normally this takes me uh, months or weeks for larger, more complicated paintings. that's the finish line. I'm just removing the masking tape from the corners and that's pretty much the final painting. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this painting demonstration at least a little bit helpful. I'm wishing you all a beautiful and inspiring day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye everyone!